Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a quest to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about, in my opinion, one of the hardest topics in geometry that doesn't have to do with proofs. It's special right triangles. I'm specifically talking about these right triangles, the 45, 45, 90, and the other one is the 30, 60, 90. And the reason why these are special right triangles is because without needing a calculator, or sine, cosine, or tangent, we can find the side lengths of these two right triangles given that we just have one of the legs or the hypotenuse. So first, the reason why this is called 45, 45, 90, it's because both of the angles are 45 degrees and the hypotenuse is right here. And for the 30, 60, 90 triangle, always put the 30 degrees on the smallest angle. If you don't know which one's the smallest, just take a guess or most of the time the problem tells you anyway, but the 90 degrees is always at the right angle. Now, for the 45, 45, 90 right triangle, both of these are called the legs. They are always equal to each other, and then we have the hypotenuse, which is always across from the 90 degree angle. See how it's across from it? And the reason why we care about this is that if let's say the leg has a length of x, that means the other leg also has a length of x, where x can be any number, 10, 5, 3.3, 2 root 12, whatever, then the hypotenuse is always going to be x times square root of 2. In other words, if you want to find the hypotenuse, just multiply the number by root 2, and quite the opposite, if I give you the hypotenuse and you want to get back to the legs, then that means you're dividing by the square root of 2, which you will have to rationalize, which I'll be talking about later in this video. And then the same idea for the 30, 60, 90, except we have different names. For instance, the leg across from the 30 is called the short leg. We know it because it looks the shortest. Just look at this. That makes the other leg across from the 60 degrees, that is the long leg. And the hypotenuse is still across from the 90 degrees, and it is always going to be the longest side length. So for the short leg, this is going to be harder to remember, but you need to memorize this. If the short leg has length x, then we say the long leg has x times the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is always going to have 2x. We always like the hypotenuse. It's the only one of these that doesn't have a square root in it. And again, if you want to go backwards, like let's say hypotenuse to the short leg, instead of multiplying by 2, you divide by 2. And so now let's look at some examples of these so we can start mastering these special right triangles. So for the first one here, I have a right triangle. It's going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which technically I only need to write one of the 45s because if that's 45 and that's 90 degrees, then this one has to be 45 automatically. So sometimes you'll only see them write one, which is fine. So I'm going to say this leg right here is 6 times the square root of 2, and I want you to find x and y, which is the other leg, and the hypotenuse. So how are we going to do this? Well, x is easy because for the 45, 45, 90, the legs are equal to each other. So in other words, I instantly know that x has to be 6 root 2. Done deal. Now for the y, remember the trick. For the hypotenuse, it's always times the square root of 2. So that means y is going to equal 6 root 2 times another root 2. And we can't leave it like this. We have some simplifying to do. There's two ways you can simplify it. I'll show you both, and then I'll tell you which one I like more. The first thing you can do is you can say root 2 times root 2 is root 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So 6 times 2 equals 12. That's one way to get the right answer. The other way you can do it, and this is the way I prefer, if I have root 2 and root 2, then I know whenever I have two square roots that are the same, the square root basically goes away. In other words, it's just 6 times 2, because the square root's gone now, and that means the answer is 12. Either way, you get y equals 12, and x is 6 root 2, and that's the answer to this first one. Okay, number 2. This one will also be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. But this time I'm giving you the hypotenuse only, and I'm going to tell you the hypotenuse is 10, and now I want you to find the legs, which I will call... A and B. Now if you want to try this on your own, go ahead. If not, 
here's the solution. First of all, I do know that A and B are going to be equal to each other. That's because they're both legs. But the way I'm going to find A and B is, if I gave you the hypotenuse, it means to find the legs, I have to divide by the square root of 2. So in other words, that means it's going to be 10 divided by root 2 for both A and for B. Now this is what I was mentioning earlier. You cannot leave this as the answer. We cannot leave a square root in the denominator. So we need to rationalize. What does that mean? It's pretty simple. It just means you multiply this fraction by the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2. And then in the numerator, you'll get 10 root 2. And in the denominator, the square roots go away because again, they're identical. And you'll just get 2 there. And then as far as simplifying goes, I can cancel out the 10 and the 2 right here. I cannot cancel out the square root of 2 because it's in the square root. So in other words, the final answer for both A and for B is 5 root 2, and that's how we do it. Okay, now just a couple more I want to look at today. These last two will be the 30, 60, 90. For this one, the right angle's here. This is going to be my 30 degrees. And again, I know this is 60 automatically right here. I don't even have to write it because if that leg's 30 and that leg's 90, the right angle, then that means this has to be 60 by default. And this time I'm going to give you the hypotenuse, which is 12, and I want you to find C and D. So my advice to you for this one, especially for the 30, 60, 90, is to label your legs. D is the short leg because it's across from the 30 degrees, and C is the long leg because it's across from the 60 degree angle here. And that's important because if I want to go from the hypotenuse to the short leg, it means that I am simply dividing by 2. So that means D is going to equal 6, and we're already halfway done the problem. And if I want to find C, I want you to know that there is no way to go from the hypotenuse to the long leg. I mean, technically there is, but I don't recommend it. Instead of going from the hypotenuse, I want you to always go from the short leg to the long leg, and the reason why is because it's just multiplied by the square root of 3. That way you have less to remember. So in other words, if the long leg is just times root 3, then C is going to be 6 root 3. That cannot be simplified at all. And we're good. That's the answer. Okay. And then I just have one more for you today. It's going to be another 30, 60, 90 triangle. But I am going to flip it on you a little bit. So here I'm giving you the 60 degrees. And I'm going to tell you this leg right here is 1. And I want you to find the other two values here which I'll be calling M and N. So go ahead, pause the video, see if you can figure it out on your own, and if not, I'll show you the solution in a second. So my first recommendation is recognizing that I gave you the long leg, which means the easiest thing to do is to go from the long leg to the short leg, which is this one. And again, that's because the 30 degrees goes right here, and the short leg is across from the 30 degree angle. And if I want to go from the long leg to the short leg, remember this is when I'm dividing by the square root of 3. So in other words, m is going to equal 1 divided by square root of 3. Now of course I do not like that because there's a square root in the denominator. So I need to rationalize this. That means multiplying the numerator and denominator by root 3. 1 times root 3 in the numerator is just square root of 3. And in the denominator, root 3 times root 3 is just 3. Or you could say it's root 9, and then you get 3 anyway. But this does not reduce. Root 3 over 3 is the answer for m. And now if I want to go to n, remember, go from the short leg to the hypotenuse, and all we're doing is multiply the short leg by 2. So then this is going to be very easy. n is just going to equal root 3 over 3 times 2. The way you want to write this is 2 root 3 over 3 and there we go this cannot reduce that's it so hopefully this makes sense now if not please ask your questions in the comments below thank you all for watching have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video take care and bye bye